Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Hey, hi everyone. It's uh, early May 2019. I'm here to do some work on the boat today. But before I start on that, I think I'll take you guys for a little bit of a walk around on the outside of the boat just to see what it looks like, uh, the working conditions uh, here at the marina, and um, yeah, just for a little bit of information. So this is the ladder here. Well, it's actually a platform with a ladder attached to it. Something I built, you saw it in the first episode. Um, built it right away because I got, got real old quickly uh, going up and down on a regular ladder. So it was one of the first things I built. Still survives eight years later. And um, yeah, it's uh, still working, working fine. It's got a nice patina to it now, but I'll go up and check it out here. See those handles are well worn now, but it makes a great space. I can, uh, if I wanted to cut some wood out here or something, uh, you know, it's great. I clamp pieces of wood to the handles or the actual platform itself, you know, and it keeps the dust down inside. So it's worked out good. Yeah, so once these boats are gone in another month or so, I do have a pretty good view of the water from here. So maybe I'll raise you up here and see if I can, uh, catch what might be a view. We'll see. So I'm going to bring you down to the water. It's a little windy here today, so there may be an audio issue. And hopefully I don't get whipped in the head by this piece of uh, covering here. But here's one of the main ways to get down to the docks. Uh, see, they don't really have it hooked up right now. They just put these this main dock in not too long ago. Now, the river was really high, but it's nice now. Yeah. So that's going to conclude the tour for today. Uh, I got to get up here and get some work done for some future upcoming episode. Uh, so for now, I'll send you back to 2012. You can uh, see what I was up to about seven years ago, uh, about this time of the year.
So when we last left off, I had removed all the V-berth cabinetry and I was ready to take out the cabin sole. So that's what I did next. Uh, the cabin sole was half inch mahogany plywood. I'm not sure if it was marine grade or not. Uh, and it was held in with number eight um, screws, prong screws. Uh, the framing underneath it was like a two by four dug fur. And it was all surprisingly in uh, really good condition. I really didn't have to do anything with it. Uh, it was just held together with uh, nails similar to what you probably would have used in 1970 to build a stud wall in a house. They were just galvanized. Uh, the only curious thing really was the fact that um, when they put the plywood in, they were trying to be efficient with it, I guess. And it just ended where it ended. And so they ended up putting these cleats in to connect the two pieces of plywood instead of just uh, running it to a framing piece. But yeah, that's what they did and uh, yeah, that's what I found. So the next thing I had to do was clean this build. Now there was all kinds of assorted items in there, nails from the carpenters doing the framing and whatnot, but there was also a uh, adjustable wrench up here and a limber hole buried in the black goo, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I started cleaning by just using a plastic scraper and scraping off the black goo. And once I got that done, then I found, I tried different things, but what I found worked the best was simple green. And I had an assortment of uh, scrub brushes and scotch bright pads and everything and just kept going at it and going at it and just got cleaner and cleaner until it was done. So it was not a fun job, but it had to be done. You know, this thing hadn't been cleaned since 1973. It was inaccessible, so it was, you, you knew it was going to be bad. Uh, once I did that, I, I started uh, gently sanding some spots here. You can see just where the fiberglass was like really rough. I mean, I cut up through a lot of small, uh, cheap latex gloves until I went to some heavy-duty ones pretty quickly. And I cut a, cut a little flesh too. And, you know, so I wanted to clean everything up. And the shiny spots you're seeing are just some a uh, couple layers of epoxy I put on afterwards just to cover it up wherever I ground. Uh, the other thing I did was I just cut the plywood back to a framing member because uh, I didn't want to deal with that cleat type deal that the uh, factory did. I guess I just wasn't as going to be as uh, efficient with my plywood as they were. So that's about it. So once the bilge was clean, then, it was, then I was ready to put in the new sole. Now I decided to use uh, marine grade dug fur, half inch, and I fastened it down with some number eight. Um, stainless steel screws. Uh, before I put any of the plywood down I epoxied with three coats of epoxy on top and bottom and all the edges. Um, I had to add a little bit of supplemental framing in here and there just so I'd have something to screw the um, plywood down to or butt it up against the other plywood. And then I added a couple of um, extra little support pieces where I was going to have an access panel and the access panel was to get to the uh, bilge pump. The um, it was a drain in there, and it was the uh, sensor for the uh, depth finder. Um, so then I got to the uh, the last piece I put in was the center piece with the access panel. I cut an opening in the plywood, and then I took some excess plywood and. Uh, Epoxied it and screwed it to the underside. Same, same as the factory did. They didn't epoxy it, but they screwed it under there. And that added, gave it a little lip for the um, plywood cover to sit on. And you're not seeing the plywood cover here, but there's a cover that fits right over that flush. And then once that was done, I filled all the screw holes with an epoxy filler, and then I put in a th uh, thickened epoxy into the seam just to get it all nice and flush. I mean, this is a subfloor. There's going to be flooring on top of this where there isn't cabinets. So. And that's it. It was, uh, it was all done and uh, it was nice to have a nice solid floor to stand on for a change. So finally the weather warmed up and I was able to work outside. So the first thing I did was mark the gunnels where 
the locations of all the um, cleats and bow rails and all that stuff was before. And then I just took pictures of it so I wouldn't have to make sketches. I just used the pictures to refer to when I put everything back in. So here we go with the sketch again. Now in this sketch, it basically um, shows how the factory put things together just based on uh, myself removing everything. Uh, so the first things I wanted to remove on the gunnels was the stainless steel rub rail, the tow rail, and the wood rub rail, all these parts on the left hand side. And so that's what I did next. So this is a new sketch after I removed those pieces and it shows, you know, all the same parts obviously, but just uh, with the tow rail, rub rail and uh, stainless steel uh, rub rail removed. Now the one curious part I, that's in this um, sketch here is this wood spacer on the left hand side. Now I pretty much think they put the spacer in right after they laminated the hull because it was kind of impregnated into the fiber into the fiberglass and the resin. Uh, you can see it in the fore deck here. There's a few remnant pieces with screws sticking out. And that was that was really just stuck pretty pretty nicely to the fiberglass. So my theory on this construction of this boat was that they put that piece on, then assembled either fully or in part the um, the whole cabin and deck and everything, sheer clamps and everything, and drop those down on top of the hull and then put that screw in to, to the lower uh, shear clamp to attach the whole assembly. I mean, that's, I've seen it done similar to that in uh, YouTube videos and shows and things, so that's maybe how they did it. I don't know. I'm not sure. You could see here that there's quite a gap between the fiberglass, top of the fiberglass hull and the shear top shear piece so I don't know if that opened up over time or if that was always that way but eh, whatever that's that's how they did it and I started taking off was the decking on the gunnel on the port side now this is the uh, like I said the port side looking forward and you can see I've removed uh, basically most of the, um, the decking and then st I started removing the top shear in this picture and then I moved over to the starboard side and the starboard side the decking wasn't quite as bad. Uh, it was a little little wet on the edge, but for the most part it was pretty solid in this, at least in this area. So I ended up uh, just taking my uh, jigsaw and cutting a little slot out of it, uh, figuring I could remove, you know, the, the stuff that was attached to the cabin in one uh, session and remove the stuff on the shear clamp in another one. But as you go forward here, you can see it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and then you get to the window posts and yeah it was it was quite a mess um yeah everything had to be replaced in that area when i was removing this decking i noticed that the side window frames once i started scraping the paint off had opened up and it was um you can see in the sketch that it was the side window frame had two pieces with a tongue and groove um seam and the adhesive in the seam must have failed and they were just opening up. So to fix this, I decided to just bore a series of holes along the window opening wherever I could. And they were spaced pretty close together, maybe six inches or so. I had to drill pretty deep in this thing. And it was a bit nerve wracking because, you know, I didn't want to blow through the side of a one inch thick piece of wood. And luckily I didn't can't guarantee that they were all perfectly centered straight, but I think they were all pretty close. So once I bored these holes, I opened up the seam as much as I could, put some unthickened epoxy in there with a little artist brush or whatever I could and used some really small syringe type things and then put thickened epoxy in there the same way and then clamped the seam shut. Then I installed all of the screws. Once all the screws were in, I mixed up some unthickened epoxy and got it down into all the boreholes. And while that was soaking into the wood, 
I mixed up another batch of, or two, of thickened epoxy and squirted it into the boreholes with this um, large syringe type thing. And just to further reinforce that joint, I later on added a piece of uh, wood trim on the interior and put screws in the top, you know, above the seam and below the seam. And I epoxied all that in, so that really stiffened it up a lot. And it helped with the uh, windowsill as well, gave it a little more support. Well, the next thing I turned my attention to was the, uh, the little corner pieces that I needed, or the port and starboard side up near the front windshield. And here you can see the piece I cut out, the uh, rotted piece. Um, that piece you see in the background with the two screw holes in it, that's the window sill. And that was rotted, I ended up cutting that out, but I wanted to leave it there just to fit the new piece. Yeah, I managed to salvage this piece with the white paint on it that had cracked off. I epoxied it into position here and then later on I actually did put some screws down through the top into the uh, piece below it. Once I cut that piece out then I fit a new piece and here you can see it's all clamped in. Actually it was a couple pieces. I used biscuit joints to attach these pieces uh, together and uh, that seemed to work pretty good. There's actually a screw going from and the front, front of this picture you can see that the uh, deck beam I put in. Uh, there's a screw on the, on the far side of that that goes into all this woodwork here and ties everything together, deck beam and the side window piece. And then of course I do the same basic thing on the uh, port side. And here you can see I added a little extra piece of, um, I call it a deck shelf in my sketch. I don't know what it is, but it's what the decking sits on, and that's also screwed into that deck beam as well at the, uh, on the left. So once those uh, forward window corner pieces were uh, installed, then I moved my attention back onto the shear clamps and the decking. And here I'm installing the first shear piece. This is on the port side looking forward. And you can notice also that that little wood spacer piece that the factory had in between the hull and the lower shear isn't isn't in here. Um, it's not necessary. I didn't I didn't need it. And so I just use a full shear piece. Then to get the proper angle with the shear and the uh, the deck shelf here, which is the piece that's painted with a little bit of white on it there, I used a piece of plywood to represent the decking material and. A block which represented the second layer of shear clamp. So now we're here on the starboard side and you can see the brand new two layers of shear clamp way in the background there and then just the first layer of the factory shear clamp you can see that little spacer piece and then you can see in the foreground the second layer of shear clamp. Now they butt jointed these shear clamps together when they did the, they installed them. I, I didn't do it that way I lap jointed mine. And then we're back on port side putting in the second layer of shear clamp. Now there's a little piece of wood tying the, uh, the deck shelf and the shear clamp together. And that's, I just put that in there to, uh, that's where the seam for the plywood decking was going to go. And I wanted it, the seam to be on some blocking. Same thing on the starboard side. Same piece of blocking and uh, starting to look starting to look pretty good there. And you can see the lap joint for the next piece that's going to go in. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this episode. Give me a like if you liked it. Uh, share it with someone if you think they're interested in this kind of thing. And um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. So, I'm looking forward to the next episode and I'm hoping you can join me for it. And um, until then, have a good one and we'll see you soon.